Investments in Precious Metals, publisher of JSMindset.com, and CEO of Tanzanian Royalty Exploration. Jim, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to have you here. What's been going through your mind, Jim, as you've been watching this MF Global uh, event unfold? Well, it's it's a very misunderstood event, um, as is for, let's say, a general public, uh, the function of clearing itself. What MF represents is is uh, the mechanism of markets, uh, the ability to actually bring the buyer and seller together for a financial settlement uh, to, uh, in, to in, in the commodity case, maintain the integrity of the account by losers paying out and, and uh, winners being paid in, and in terms of security accounts, by being able to uh, hold, uh, hold the security on the behalf of, of the client. Uh, a, a mechanism which is vital to both the commodities, uh, the functioning of both the commodities and uh, securities markets. Now, there's two things that can, two events that can be negative for people's interest. A, a breaking of a market. That's a price situation. But the breaking of the mechanism is much more serious than even the breaking of a market because the re- recovery of markets can be created for some period of time by injection of liquidity. But the breaking of the of the actual mechanics of the market uh, present a much more difficult challenge, because without the mechanism, there is no market. Uh, people's confidence uh, is uh, is a fragile thing. Their lack of understanding of what MF represents uh, is uh, is fortuitous in the sense that if people really knew that their their uh, statements they receive might, as it has for the clients of MF, representing nothing whatsoever, uh, the actual functioning of markets would be brought into question. Jim, I've been receiving a tidal wave of emails and uh, questions and comments from people, that's, uh, uh, listeners that are saying, well, this happened in the futures market, so we can safely assume that it can happen again, but can this happen uh, to a major stock brokerage? Can I be holding a 1,000 shares of XYZ company, and it turns out that, guess what, I don't own them because the brokerage went under and some something funny went down, and I've got nothing in my name. Is that beginning to become a reality in the U.S.? MF was not just commodities. MF was commodities and securities, and securities in those accounts are lost. MF was not just commodities. That's a mistake. MF cleared both. So we are at a stage here then, Jim, that people owning traditional shares in a company, be it GE, be it Anglo Gold or whatever, now share that same clearinghouse risk? Uh, They do share the same clearinghouse risk. When the law allows hypothecation or the use of, uh, or the, the secondary use of, of customers' funds to create credibi- credits for speculation. The answer to your question is simple yes. Yeah. <laughs> you also sent out a, a recent update to your uh, email database uh, speaking towards direct registration, and I'm very curious about that, uh, and I know that our listeners are too. Can you explain what that is, and, and how can shareholders of companies completely eliminate, if it's at all possible, that counterparty brokerage house risk? Well, the, the uh, use of, of direct registration is one method, and it's, it's, the, it's the, probably the easiest uh, method to use. Direct registration is registration at the transfer agent, not at the clearinghouse. So, not of the clearinghouse. So, the registration uh, of Joe, Joe Jones's stock would be at the, at the transfer agent for uh, XYZ company that he's presently in, uh, he or she is presently invested in. It's it's a request that your 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 uh, asset leave the, the balance sheet of the clearinghouse slash brokerage house and goes into an area which is a uh, non-financial entity, the the transfer agent. Uh, This is very simple for any company to participate in, costs practically nothing for the company to do, and uh, is a great benefit to its stockholders. And and, and not every company uh, is in this system. But by demand of their stockholders, companies that are not in will come in. There should be no significant charge, if any, for this, because it doesn't cost anything. It's registration of your securities, I mean you and your securities, with a transfer agent, a non-financial entity, away from the clearing agent and brokerage house 
financial entities. How far away of a step, Jim, is it? I've heard people talk about getting their shares physically printed and having physical possession of their shares. Is that the next step? The next step, uh, if you wanted physical shares, would be you, the investor, contact the transfer agent and make that request. If the company involved agrees, uh, and many do, many don't, uh, then if, um, uh, where they agree, automatically you would receive uh, your your physical paper certificate. Now, the problem with that is simple. If you've ever lost your car keys, don't hold paper certificates. Loss of a certificate uh, is, is, a, is, is, a, is a modest disaster. Jim, what are your thoughts here on the disparity between physical gold prices and corresponding mining shares, be it majors and juniors? Well, there are significant um, uh, competing investments to the gold mining company that didn't exist back in the 70s, such as the, the exchange-traded funds that represent gold and silver. And uh, the the uh, the thought uh, that uh, or general understanding incorrect that the that the majority of these funds actually represent gold and silver, and not paper instruments based on gold and silver. Uh, the the largest of, the largest of these funds and and uh, many others are uh, if you would read the prospectus and and anyone who's invested in anything should take time to read the prospectus. You'll find out that you are that you're uh, invested in a company which doesn't have even a legal uh, obligation to deliver gold itself, uh, uh, and that they have the absolute ability to uh, deal in uh, paper equivalents. So the 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 uh, ease of dealing with the exchange traded funds, regardless that they don't fit the fact of what you're trying to attempt, has taken away significant monies that might otherwise have found their way into the gold into into the gold uh, uh, mining area, taken advantage of by the hedge funds that have been short of the juniors, long of the majors, on the basis that if you can insult price enough, you can stop a company from financing. And uh, that would that would seriously affect uh, the companies who are in exploration to to companies which were beginning production. So taking advantage of that, selling a product based on that, and having competition uh, from other markets has has definitely been a negative for the gold uh, for the gold explorer and producer. However, the other concept is that gold is in this rise is transient. And that uh, that a, a, a peak could come at any time. Uh, whether you, uh, the statement by Bragi today uh, that uh, the monies received are available to the ECB will not be used immediately to purchase uh, um, uh, euro bonds, cause gold to have a range of a hundred dollars, up fifty and down fifty. Uh, the, the general thinking amongst the youngsters that run the hedge funds is not a very pro gold uh, pro gold school. And very much an error of that. Uh, the idea that gold at 17 uh, had a double top in the 1900s and therefore that's the top of gold is, it, it could only be drawn by those that have no experience. <laughs>